call Hakeem Jeffries a new activist. And, and so this is somebody who's definitely got progressive political ambition, an advocate for the poor. He has been an advocate for African Americans. This is not somebody who's not wearing their race on their sleeve, but this is somebody who was much, much uh, better at being able to appeal to the changing demographics of this particular district. And for that reason, I'm going to suspect that he's going to, you know, probably beat Charles Barron handily. Um, Charles Barron, you know, relatively speaking, is, you know, very, very racialized. Some people would argue even hyper-racialized. Um, and that's probably going to be a turnoff to a lot of the young, upwardly mobile young professionals who are also, you know, living in neighborhoods like Fort Greene. It's a question of whether or not Charles Barron's views are actually congruent with the voters in the 8th Congressional District. I suspect that they won't be. So Charles Barron is, you know, an uber-black nationalist. There's no question about that. If we look at his background and we look at his ties, he's going to be somebody who is going to be very, 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 very black. Um, that district is not very, very black anymore, and it's rapidly changing. You know, I'm familiar with that part of Brooklyn because my non-black friends have moved in um, in the past few years. And when I've had black friends who have lived in that area, they've definitely been the Wall Street types. So that type of rhetoric may have been fine in the, the you know, late 60s and 1970s, but now you've got newer people moving in who don't view the world that way. And Hakeem Jeffries is do, running a balancing act, for sure, uh, but he at least has the background and the credentials where he can speak to the yuppie and buppy types um, and actually still advocate for uh, those who are downtrodden. And that might resonate a little bit better than Charles Barron's hyper-nationalistic language.